Welcome to Brenton's fish room tour number two. Had some growing plants, some growing fish, some growing shrimp. Start with the first tank here. Got the Super Dumbo Red Dragons and the Purple Mosaic mixes. Some of them are purple and some of them are red. There we go. Got it nice and focused. So there's a lot of variation. This is the first generation, so I expect there to be a lot of variation. None of these are full-blooded Red Dragon or Purple Mosaic. I can quickly tell, even with their adolescence, all of these are mixed pretty nicely. I'm not sure if those are Baby Tears or Monte Carlo back there. We've got the Pearl Weed, Pilo Moss, the Algae's having a field day. We've got this Blue Dream. I always felt like when I looked into the substrate, of the tank no matter what it was if i saw bubbles coming from the bacteria i'd assume that the gas is thriving i have to assume that the bacteria is doing well and eventually i'll keep my eye out for nitrates actually going down it seems like i can go maybe a month and a half without a water change if i'm not overfeeding I start keeping a closer eye on it at around the 30 day mark. The plants do seem to consume the nitrates at the top and this bacteria is blooming for me. I've got the air on full blast back here. So yeah. I'm trying to put a dent in some duckweed. It's doing a good job until the guppy grass saved it. Got a few purple dragons in here. I think I'm getting to the point where I'm ready to just mix these uh, purple mosaic in with the general population. If I say purple dragon, I mean purple mosaic. Boom! They're just breeding really slow and I think it's time to mix it up. We've got the mystery snails. They're all noshing on some shrimp. I feel like something is going wrong with these mystery snails. They're moving a little sluggish. I just did a water change for them. I read you need to keep the pH above 7.5. I've been using an alkaline buffer, I believe, to bring that up. I think they're eating back there. I have to do a wellness check on them. You can see the rings on that shell. It was like looking good until... I just feel like that's an indication of some kind of deficiency. I'm always worried about not getting enough calcium in this tank, so I have been putting Tums in here. They love the Tums. The smaller snails that are non-fancy, they love the Tums even more. You can tell all of these common snails, they have like a gorgeous shell. It's so shiny. Sometimes I even think they're picking on the larger snails. Like, is there a slime coat on their, their shell or is that bladder snail noshing on that white snail? The crystal wart's still going. I was really hoping they'd just eat it all. In the past, I've had mystery snails even keep duckweed in check. I might be feeding these guys too well. They just don't seem busy enough. All right, I guess we'll roll out to the ground tank. Oh yeah. So this is where the red shrimp are. We've got a colony of red shrimp and a colony of black bar endlers. I think this colony is a little more female heavy. I call these group A.
These guys usually deal with my shins. So they're a little shocked right now to see the camera. Bobbing and weaving. Filled with guppy grass. This one's rocking no gravel as well. Turn on over. Here's the sick tank. The sick slash deformed tank. These ones also seem pretty shocked to get individual attention. They're really good at eating. You wouldn't think the sick tank was good at eating, but they will gobble up any medicine, any food. Throw boiled spinach in there the other day. There's a super dragon mix. You can kind of see how he compares to the other guppies. For some reason, some of them just came out massive. He's been giving me a strange wobble. So I took him out, put him in here. I'm gonna keep my eye on him. One up. All right, this has just a uh, standard light bulb sitting on top of here. No gravel, guppy grass. The blue jelly shrimp. This is a purple red guppy tank mix again. I recently got rid of all the males in here. There's a few babies, but I've seen reproduction really slow down on these guys. And I think that I'm just gonna start consolidating. And I might just eventually integrate this line with my, my common breed. Moving on over. All right, moving on. My discard bucket. These tubs make water changes on the ground a lot easier. The trash can doesn't go low enough. This is the 32 gallon trash can where I keep all of my water that I'm going to do a water change with. I do this for a few reasons. I have nitrate heavy water that comes in. It doesn't come in too bad, but I try to use that to my advantage. I want the water to be as low in nitrates as possible. So I have a water hyacinth that I just put in here. We have water poppy, frog bit. And it does a really good job. Well, the water hyacinth just got in here, but the frog bit, the duckweed, it always did a really good job of sucking all the nitrates, the ammonia. Every once in a while, I've caught ammonia coming out of my pipes. Once or twice a year, there's water that comes out of these pipes that I would not recommend for fish. So keeping this bucket of water I get to curb that a little bit. The temperature is always too hot or too cold in the middle of the summer. The water comes out in Florida, I think 92 degrees right out of the pot, pipes. Doesn't make me happy. And then it's very cold in the winter. I know some fish like a blast of cold water. In the beginning stages, I really appreciated this, just taking that factor out of it. I didn't have to measure water coming out of the pipe. It was, uh, this alleviated a lot of anxiety for me. And then go on down to this tank. Got a facelift. We've got some moss that's battling algae. We've got all the moss that was tangled with guppy grass in this tank that was hidden. I know somewhere in here there's Taiwan moss, peacock moss, and willow moss. So I need to figure out which is which. Maybe they're all mixed together. It's been probably 15 months, so it's kind of hard to remember. We've got the yellow tiger endlers in here. They filled up the other tank with babies, so I figured in the spirit of avoiding some inbreeding, we'd get these guys in here. Dark red Luigia came in the mail just the other day. When plants come in the mail and they're always kind of baked by the sun, I usually just say a prayer and gently set them in water. Don't even try to plant them and uh, I hope it works out. I think they sent me a free plant. They didn't label it, but the big one in there is Retalia Macondre, I believe. It might not be. And then the Luigi is kind of the, the smaller plant. 
And then we have the purple root floaters. These are Rickia water spangles, or purple fringed Rickia. Stuck on the sides here. I got this shipment from eBay as a tiny little cup. I have high hopes for these dirty little spangles. I'll also tell you what this uh, gravel is. It's the same gravel as the other one, the same company. I'm not sure if it's a different color. These days, who even does gravel? These gladiator shelves. They're not on sale anymore. The measurements for these are no longer available. These are available and I had to just kind of go off the seat of my pants. No one has done a video on kind of the, the measurements on these, but as you can see, you can fit a 20 gallon long down there and you can get in here with some finessing. I'll have to do a video about that later. You can articulate your joints <laughs> and get the elbow in there. And I've, I've found a way to make it work with uh, tight, tight spaces. Okay, so we're going on to the first guppy colony, the first mixed guppy colony. Turn off these lights real quick. So this is a guppy colony. I slowly add endlers to this. Got the quarries. Guppy grass has absolutely taken over. I started putting potassium in here. And with the potassium, it's just been nonstop. We've got some runners in here from the Amazon sword. Every other plant that I put in here, this two years ago maybe, has died. And as you can see, these smaller gladiators can actually just fit a 20 gallon on there. Has a little bit of room on the edge for your, for your duckweed to sit. All right. This tank's evolved since last time a little bit. These are common Venus fly traps and they need distilled water. I'm scared of calcium coming from here, hitting inside these pans and them somehow getting minerals from the water. They sit in very clean, low TDS water in the swamps and nature. All of the carnivorous plants actually require distilled rain or osmosis water. The Japanese trapdoor snails, they seem to be in a bad mood too. They do feast a little bit on the toms. I was thinking that I was like keeping the mystery snails pH. I was trying to keep that artificially above 7.5 maybe these guys would appreciate me not messing with the pH and they look a little better in this tank, but I, I feel like they're always getting picked on. His shell looked really terrible in the other tank and it's gotten a little bit better. The Japanese trapdoors are always getting picked on by the common snails. Of course, the common snails, look at those gorgeous shells. No calcium deficiencies because we love Tom's. So what we have in this tank is a big clump of mystery moss. This is a, I know this is a mixture. There's a little bit of pilo moss in it. This one came from a tank and it seems like it's a different type than everyone else. So I'm glad I kept this one separate. A little less mixing going on here. Blue water hyssop, Indian tooth cup, round leaf tooth cup. We have Brazilian water weed. We have the Mexican oak leaf plant. And then I believe there's a few red root floaters in here. I've really had the time trying to grow these red roots. They've been a little finicky. I find the best thing to do is to leave them alone and make sure they have enough space to grow. And of course they, they kind of like, here we go, really right here, this is my strongest batch. They like to have everything available, iron, potassium. I use a root, stimulate, and then an all-in-one fertilizer. A little cloudy in this tank too, but I'm glad how it's turned out. It's been a plant refugee. The latest refugee here is the windy, Cryptocorn. 
The little windy crypt is just a little sprout now. It was being bullied by an Amazon sword. And we have a little bit of Valisneria in here, the last bit. It almost got choked out by duckweed. Got the LT antlers hanging out. The green jade shrimp are doing well. They're actually the only breed of new shrimp that are uh, multiplying correctly. These are a hardy shrimp and they are breeding really well. There's so many mutations and variations going on. I can tell this will be a challenge. All right, going up. And welcome to the land of frog bit. It's a good thing all of these plants, they started melting on me. I never seem to be able to give them enough shade. At this point, it seems like a lot of shade. And of course, here's the first generation yellow tiger antlers, all of the offspring from my first shipment. All of their parents are out of the tank. That's nice. School's out. We have the Java fern, the Windelow fern. They're making a comeback in here. The Anubias, the gold coin. Hopefully they come back with a vengeance. This tank looks quite a bit different than last time. They're all a little frustrated that uh, the uh, guppy grass was taken out. All right, we have the gold platys. All these female gold platys. I'd like to go ahead and sell all these. Put some something else in this tank. I know that's Java moss. I know that's Java moss. There's no males in these tanks, but these babies just keep coming. down in the hospital. We have a yellow tiger. She was giving me the death wobble. She's looking a lot better. This tank keeps leaking on me. Anytime I go right past the, uh, the black line, I've got a leak in the ceiling. Now you see why I need those carnivorous plants. Oh, look at that fly making himself at home. Bay got himself a little drink. The stack endlers. Looking a lot better, a lot more colorful. Getting used to home. That female has always had kind of an odd body shape. She acts healthy. All right, one over. We've got the half black blue hybrids. I was pretty laissez-faire with this, and I believe that a uh, black bar endler started mixing with the jeans. So as you can see, there we go. There's a little bit of black bar in there, which isn't bad. These are one of the healthiest fish I had. Genetic diversity, the better. So here's another group. This was a sick group. See, that one looks like an original Japan blue. This was a sit group. Sit groups always come with that, with that oddly shaped female fish. There she is. There she is. So whenever I have like an outbreak after that eBay disaster, there's an oddly shaped female. And there she is. It seems like she got that shape after she got sick as opposed to before. This group's been really good about being low on the D form. But she seems to get around fine. She seems to get along with everyone. She doesn't get picked on. Just let her be. 
Here's the 20 gallon at the bottom. These guys had a brush of something and I was thinking uh, that it was the air pump maybe too high. I don't think it is. Moving in this slow way kind of reminds me of, look, there it is. A weird shape. I'm not sure if that's like their form of inbreeding because this is just an assorted tank. I have have Endler hybrids in here. They shouldn't be laying down, but yeah, that's a nasty little wobble. I've doused this one with Paracleanse, Ick X. I have to take more drastic measures. I had to pull two wobblers out of there just now, put them in the sick tank. Move it on. Go to the top. We've got Blue Star Endlers. These Blue Star Endlers came in really small, but they grew, they've grown extremely fast. They also came with uh, no, no insulation. It was like 90 degrees outside. They were a little pale, but they still made it. Or the uh, Dwarf Red Lily came in the mail. And of course, these are uh, the Blue Jelly. Blue Jelly Shrimp, Neocardinia. She is loaded. Loaded and ready to wrap. Got the Brazilian pennywort up here, absolutely struggling. I can't tell if it's gonna make it or not. I often wonder if somehow maybe it's, is the pH thrown off? I check and it says it's only seven. It's around seven, maybe 6.9 with this big chunk of wood. But I wonder if the wood is the source of my issues in this tank. Seems like guppy grass did well in this, but I'm not sure if anything else has performed well. Going one, one down, get a snake plant. More black bars, foxtail plant, red shrimp. All right. As we back up from this tower, go up to this one. I took all the plants out of this some floaters up. We've got the purple mosaic males in here. There's a mix. Red dragon slash purple. Right there. You can tell from that long body. Just got some water wisteria. Came in pretty hot in the mail. So I just kind of gently put it in the water. And I'm just going to sit and hope. So that purple root. floater right there. I kept talking about those pretty snail shells. Here's an example of a not pretty snail shell. That snail, give that boy some tums. Here's another black bar tank. This black bar colony, they're not bunking with red shrimp. They're bunking with blue dream shrimp. And then the last one. These were two little babies that came from when the stack endlers just landed. And I thought the stack endlers looked really sick. So I grabbed these two and they turn out to be males. So, oh, you knew I was talking about them. Got some crystal ward up there. This used to be a heavy quarantine tank, but I think I'm gonna put gravel, put real plants in here. 
bag of crushed coral I'm going to get out. That is how I used to do it, but no longer. We've got a pitcher plant. We've got fly traps, fly trap variants, butterwort variants. Sitting right on top of a peat mox mix and sphagnum moss. I feel like they're just getting settled. The leaves are folding a little bit, but I don't think they're dying. I think I put them in correctly. All right, we've got a sundew and a sundew. All right, they've caught a few gnats already. This pot is empty. Two sundews, four butterworts. Doing this fly trap and the pitcher plant. And they all sit in a little pool of distilled water. All right, moving on. It's kind of like my desk station. Get the orders together here. This is a another gladiator shelf. It's the largest one they have. This one is still for sale. And I will be filling up 20 more fish tanks on this thing. So, wish me luck. It is a storage shelf right now. And if we turn all the way over, we could see my battle station. Only if it wants to. There we go. She may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts. and the video game tower. Every game you can think of really keeps a fish keeper entertained, you know what I mean? So that is, that is it. With this, I was thinking we'd put two forties, two forties, a row of 10, a row of 10. Might put a row of 20 on there. It's 24 inches across for the depth of the shelf. shelf. And as you can see, we're at 24 and a half inches, 24 and a quarter. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna run the board over or I'm just going to deal with 10 gallons up there. And this has been another episode of Brent's Fish.